Hi Daily Church family, it's Jordan here. Hey, I hope you're having a wonderful and blessed day today. Today we're going to be reading Hebrews 5 together and we're going to discover why is Jesus our high priest? Why is Jesus called our high priest? Well, we're going to discover this today. You know, today our vision is simple. It's to help develop and deploy you into the ministry that God has for you. And one of the ways we do this is to help you start a daily church at home. If you're watching from church today from all over the world, stick around. We've got some great discussion questions for you. But are you ready to read Hebrews 5 together? Let's do it and learn why is Jesus our high priest? We believe when you know Jesus Christ, everything changes. Daily Church helps people grow daily in their relationship with God. Welcome to daily.church. Intercession. Intercession. What does that word even mean? Well, when you read the Bible, you hear the word intercession a lot. It's all over the Bible. And intercession is this. Intercession is the action of intervening on behalf of another. And this is what the role of the priesthood would do. The role of the priesthood would, would be the in-between, the go-between between God and the nation of Israel. So there would be the nation of Israel, there would be the high priest, and then there would be God. So that's how the order went. And for the nation of Israel to communicate with God, they had to make a yearly sacrifice called the Day of Atonement. And they, the high priest would make this sacrifice for the sins of the people, um, using a lamb, <laughs> right? And they'd make this sacrifice so that God could hear the, 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 the voice of the people through the high priest. That's how it worked. That's, that's the example. That's, the, that's what it used to look like in the Old Testament. And, and today we have a new high priest and his name is Jesus Christ. That's right. His name is Jesus Christ. And today Jesus Christ makes intercession for you and for me to God. And you know what? He's the one who came in between us so that we could have a relationship with God. And instead of sacrificing that lamb, he sacrificed himself um, for us. Let's read Romans 8, 34 together about this interceding for us or what intercession is. Romans 8, 34 says, Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who has raised us to life? is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. You know, Jesus Christ today is alive. He is our great high priest, and he's making intercession for us today. He's interceding for us. Isn't that awesome that we have a God who hears our prayers and makes intercession for us today? Today, let me ask you a question. When you think of Jesus as your high priest, what comes to mind? When you think of Jesus as your high priest, what comes to mind? Many of you today don't think of Jesus as your high priest because you're not a Jew. You weren't born in the nation of Israel. You didn't grow up every year seeing this thing called the Day of Atonement where the high priest would come and, and sacrifice a lamb and on behalf of the people. We didn't, grow up, we didn't grow up in that culture. But the Jews would, would have grown up in the culture. They would know what a high priest is. And today, I want to help educate you on what this high priest is, who he is, and what he does, and how Jesus Christ is our high priest today. Today, why do we need a high priest? Well, we need a high priest because we can't do it alone. We can't go to God on our own. We need someone. We need some person who has a relationship with God. And that person is Jesus Christ. And he was our high priest and is our high priest. And if today, if you want to come to God, you have to come to the high priest and his name is Jesus Christ. So today we're going to be learning about what the high priest is and what it's all about. So would you turn it with me in your Bibles to Hebrews 5 and the title of this message is, Why is Jesus Christ our high priest? Why is Jesus our high priest? You know, Hebrews was written to the Christians, especially the Jewish Christians who knew the Old Testament. They understood the Day of Atonement. They understood the high priest. They, inter they understood what he did and how he made intercession for the people of Israel. They understood all this. So this Hebrews was written to the Jewish Christians who knew the Old Testament. And the author is showing how the Old Testament is fulfilling the New Testament. So in Hebrews, uh, we're going to learn why is Jesus our high priest. So as we read, ask what is God speaking to you because we believe that God wants to speak to you today. Amen. All right. Truth number, there are four truths that we're going to discover in Hebrews 5. And number one is this. Are you ready? Truth number one in Hebrews 5 is Jesus is our high priest because he made atonement for our sins. Jesus is our high priest because he made atonement for our sins. Jesus Christ made atonement for our sins. What does that even mean? You're asking yourself, what does atonement mean? Well, it's a word that was very important in the Bible, especially to the Jews. And they understood that the, the, the high priest would make atonement for the sins of the people. On the day the priest would go before the people 
to make intercession, it was a day called the Day of Atonement or a day called Yom Kippur. And it was a ritual that was for the atonement of the sins and only high, the high priest could do it. It's described in Le Leviticus 16, one through, through 34. And the atonement ritual began with Aaron as the high priest of Israel. And he would come into the Holy of Holies once a year. And this day was called the Day of Atonement, which is called Yom Kippur. And it happened because he, there had to be someone that could go uh, stand in between uh, God and the sins of the people. And that was what the high priest would do. Let's read about the high priest together in Hebrews 5, 1 through 4 together. Every high priest is selected from among the people and is appointed to represent the people in matters related to God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray. Since he himself is subject to weakness, this is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins, as well as for the sins of the people. And, to, and, 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 and no one takes this honor on himself, but receives it when called by God, just as Aaron was. So Hebrews 5, 1 through 4 shows us what the high priest did. They would go and, and, and make a sacrifice and, and on, this, uh, on behalf of the sins of the people. And this was an appointed day of the year, the Day of Atonement. And they weren't called by the people, they were called by God, just like Aaron was. And so this Day of Atonement, it was very special. And Jesus was the, the one who came. You know, he, was, he went to a cross on the a Day of Atonement. Can you believe it? Jesus Christ went to a cross on the Day of Atonement, and he died once and for all. And after Jesus died on the cross, there was no more Day of Atonement. Remember, the, the, there was a revolt, and the Jewish temple was destroyed in A.D. 70. And there was no more sacrifices. And still to this day, there are no more sacrifices. There's no more Day of Atonement uh, in, in Israel because Jesus Christ ended the Day of Atonement because he was the atonement for our sins. And we see that he cleanses from our sins in Hebrews 7.27. And by the blood of bulls and goats, they can only attend, uh, atone for sin for so long. But Jesus was the fulfillment of all those sacrifices. He was the one. That, the, that, the, that, that was foreshadowing what was going to happen in the future. And he declared in John 19.30, it is finished. It is finished. With me on dying on the cross, I am the, I'm the, the atonement for all the sins. And now the, the day of atonement ends because I have made atonement for our sins. That's what Jesus did when he went to a cross. And today Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of God because all the sins of the world has been atoned for if you believe in Jesus today. Will you believe in Jesus today? Remember today that Jesus Christ made atonement for all our sins once and for all. And today you can come to Jesus as your high priest. Remember Jesus was the high priest. And we're going to learn about how Jesus is our high priest in truth number two. Are you ready for truth number two? Truth number two is this. Jesus is both king and priest in the order of Melchizedek. Jesus is both king and priest in the order of Melchizedek. You know, biblical typology is something that you learn in seminary. Many of you maybe have went to seminary, but if not, don't worry. You're in good hands. I've been through seminary, and this is one of the keys that you learn uh, as you teach the Bible. You learn about biblical typology. And typology is a kind of symbolism found in the Bible. And typology of Christ shows us how people in the Old Testament are a type of Christ that is to come. So what it sh shows us is through typology that, you know, there's certain characters in the Bible that look like Jesus Christ. So if you look at their life, you say, hey, this is what Jesus Christ would do later on. And so there are a few people that I want to show you who are a type of Christ in the Old Testament. One of these is Jonah. Remember Jonah went, was uh, went into the belly of a fish for three days and three nights and then was, was spit back up on the shore. This shows us Jesus Christ. He was in the belly of the earth for three days and then came back to life. That's a typology of Christ. It shows us what Jesus Christ would do through the person of Jonah. There's another person. His name is Abraham. Remember Abraham? He became a great nation, but he was a foreigner in the land. And he was going into the land of promise, right? He was journeying to the promised land. Well, in the same way, Jesus also was born here a foreigner. He wasn't, he wasn't of this world, right? He was born a foreigner into this world. And he was helping bring, to bring 
a whole world into the promised land through the gospel, through his death on the cross. Instead of Abraham bringing people into the promised land, which is Canaan, which is Israel, Jesus Christ would come to bring people into the promised land, which is heaven, a home in heaven. Job was another character. Job went through suffering. If you read Job, it's filled with suffering. And Job represents a type of Jesus, that Jesus Christ would suffer for the sins of the world. He suffered for you and me on the cross. And then another person who is a type of Christ in the Old Testament, his name is Joseph. Remember Joseph? Joseph was betrayed by his brothers. He was thrown into a pit. But then guess what? In a moment, he, was, he became the king or the second hand of the nation of Egypt. And he became a ruler. In the same way, Christ did the same thing. Remember, uh, Jesus Christ was betrayed by his brothers, the Jews, the Jewish people who betrayed him and put him on a cross. But guess what? Three days later, he rose again and he's now the ruler of heaven and earth. And guess what? These are just pictures of what Christ looks like in the Old Testament. We call this typology. And guess what? We see the greatest typology in the Bible through a character called Melchizedek. Melchizedek was, it was in the Old Testament a character, and he was a high priest. He was both a king and a priest. There was no one like Melchizedek because he was both a king and a priest at the same time. Let's read Hebrews 5, 5 through 6 together. In the same way, Christ did not make did not take on himself the glory by becoming a high priest, but God said to him, you are my son, today I have become your father. And he says in another place, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Jesus came through the order of Melchizedek. Who is Melchizedek? Well, Jesus Christ came to be a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So Melchizedek, why is this important? Because he is both a king and a priest at the same time. His name, Melchizedek, is a combination of of Hebrew words, king and righteousness, making Melchizedek a righteous, kingly priest. Did you hear that? And that's exactly who Jesus is, a righteous, kingly priest. Let's see the parallels here between Jesus and Melchizedek. Parallel number one, Melchizedek was a priest outside the Levitical priesthood, Therefore, not a minister of the law of Moses, which came much later. But Jesus is the ultimate priesthood outside of the Levitical priesthood. Therefore, not a minister of the law of Moses, which he fulfilled. Isn't that awesome? Number two, another parallel is Melchizedek was a king of righteousness, according to the translation of his name. Jesus is the king of righteousness because he purchased righteousness for us on a cross. Then number three, another parallel, Melchizedek was a king of peace, as Salem means peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace who will one day bring a kingdom of universal peace. And then lastly, another parallel between Melchizedek and Jesus is Melchizedek was without a, a record of parents having neither a, a beginning or end recorded in scripture. And Jesus Christ also is the eternal Son of God, neither having a beginning or end, eternally one with the Father, the Holy Spirit, as the Son of God. You see, my friends, you see this amazing parallels between Melchizedek and Jesus Christ. Jesus is both a king and a priest, a righteous king and a righteous priest in the order of Melchizedek. And so in the Old Testament, it's referenced to Melchizedek because Jesus Christ is our priest today. He's a better priest. He's, he, he came for the sins of the people and he's come for our sins today so we could be forgiven. Today, remember this, that Jesus Christ fulfilled all of the Old Testament scriptures to be your king today. All right, let's go to truth number three in Hebrews 5. Truth number three is this. Jesus is the author of salvation. Jesus Christ is the author of salvation. You know, have you ever written a book in your life? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever read a book in your life? Many of you have read a book in your life. And how many books do you get to the end? Many times you never finish them. But if you ever want to know um, the book even better you got to know the author and it takes a lot of work to be an author you have to come with great ideas and put them into one book right and it's hard to make uh, great ideas come into a simple message and be, writing a book is, is really is really tough and I think you know the most books I've ever read is a few I've gotten through halfway through but not all the way through in books but you know, God not, never stops writing our lives. God never stops writing our lives. He is the author of salvation and he is the author of our life when we give it to him. 
today, remember, why is God the author? Because he's the source. When you read a book, a book is written by an author because the author knows the source of the material. In the same way, Jesus is the source of salvation, as the author of salvation, because he's the source for everything in life. My friends, let's read about this in Hebrews 5, 7 through 10 together. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his, of his reverent submission. Son, through he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. See, my friend, Jesus Christ, this shows a picture of Jesus making intercession for us and going to the cross to die our death. He lived the perfect life. God heard his, his prayers, and he was designated by God to be a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. He became the source of eternal life. Did you hear what it said? He became the source of of eternal life for all who believe. Why did Jesus become the source of eternal life? It's because he paid for our sins on a cross. So in order to have your sins forgiven, you have to come to Jesus Christ, the source of eternal life. Today, Jesus is the author of life itself, the author of salvation. People say there are many ways to be saved, and that's not true. There's only one way to be saved, and that's to come and meet the author of salvation, and his name is Jesus Christ. You have to come to Jesus to find salvation. If you don't find, find, if you don't find Jesus, you don't find salvation. There's no salvation apart from Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. So why is Jesus important to us? It's because Jesus is the only way. Jesus said, said I'm the only way, the truth, and life. Do you believe that today? Today, Jesus is the author of our salvation. And why is he the author? Uh, why is he um, the, the source of life and the author of life? It's because he was once made perfect. He was made perfect. Did you hear that? Once made perfect, that line? It's because he lived the perfect life. No one else could have lived the perfect life. You know, look at all the, the religions of the world. Every single one of those people that were leaders in those different religions were sinners. Only Jesus was not a sinner. He was, the right, he was a righteous high priest. He was a righteousness of God. And he lived a perfect, whole, and godly life. Today, this means that through Jesus Christ, he was the perfect sacrifice for our sins. And so Jesus Christ, when he went to the cross, he offered himself as the perfect sacrifice for us. Isn't that great, great news? Today, you can meet the author, author of life itself. You can find, meet the one who is the source. And his name is Jesus Christ. And when you come to know Jesus, you come into a relationship with God. Would you like to come into a relationship with God today? Well, I'm going to pray with you at the end here in a few minutes to start that relationship. All right, truth number four. Are you ready for truth number four? Let's do it. Truth number four in Hebrews 5 is this. It's time to grow in Jesus Christ. It's time to grow in Jesus Christ. Are you growing in Jesus Christ today? Many of you might not have a relationship with Christ, but we're going to get you started. And when you give your life to Christ, you become a new person, a new creation. And that's when you begin, we call it a baby uh, in Christ, and you begin to grow in your life and your walk with God. And it's amazing. It's amazing how God will lead your life. And I'm, I'm always learning every day of my life as a Christian, new things in God is because I'm still growing in my relationship with God. But today, many of you are just getting started. And today, I want to help you grow in your relationship. You know, there's a story of a girl that I saw on TV, and she was born with a, a disease. And her disease was a problem with her cells. Her cells and her body would not mature. And so she would stay young her whole life. It's funny to look at her, but you would look at her and you'd, you'd see her as a small little, uh, you know, three foot, tw a 12 year old girl. But in fact, she wasn't that old at all. She was actually much older. She was 25, 27 years old, but she looked like a a baby girl and so it was hard for her to grow up because she had these genes and these cells that would not allow her to mature and so she stayed young her whole life and because of that she lived at her at home with her parents think about that life you know it's it's great to, to know that you and I have moved out of our parents house or maybe you're planning on moving out of your parents house to get your own house and have your own life and that's, that's what we all want in life. We want to grow up. We want to mature. We want to get a better job and, 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 and move into a better place. Well, the same way God wants that for us to today. He wants us to mature. God wants us to grow up in our salvation. He wants us to grow up in our faith and as a Christian, as a believer. 
What does that look like? Well, we're going to read in Hebrews 5, 11 through 14, what it looks like to be a, a believer and to be a mature believer. Hebrews 11 through 14, uh, 5, 11 through 14 says this, We have much to say about this, but it's hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, you, not solid food. Anyone, of, anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So what, this, what the Hebrews... Uh, 5, 11 through 14 is talking about is that when Jesus Christ saves you, he wants you to grow up. He wants you to become a mature believer. You know, he wants you to live in the righteousness that God purchased for you on the cross. Remember, Jesus Christ is our, uh, is our high priest, but he's a righteous king and priest forever, right? In the order of Melchizedek. But he wants us, as we get saved, is to live a righteous life. We can, by the grace of God. We not, it's not saying we have to be perfect, but we have to give up our old life and move on to the new life. Today, let me ask you a question. Are you moved on to the new life in Christ? Are you living for God? Are you living for His righteousness? Are you learning more about the Bible every day? Are you understanding how to distinguish good from evil in your life? You know, today, this is your day to know what good and evil is. And when you read the Bible, you can start seeing this world that we live in is filled with evil. And there's things that want to take hold of your life. And the Bible says that we are to flee from those things and live the holy life that God wants for us. And why? Why is that important? Because when we grow up and we become mature, then we can make an impact for the kingdom. Would you like to make an impact for the kingdom of heaven in your life? Well, you have to get mature first. You can't go out into the battle. You can't go and save souls for the kingdom unless you're a mature Christian. And that's where God wants you to get you. And this is why here at Daily Church, we want to help you grow in your faith and your walk with God so you can go and make an impact and make a difference for the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Well, amen. Well, Hebrews 5 has been really great. What has God been speaking to you? What has God been speaking to you today? Today in Hebrews 5, we've learned these four truths. Number one, Jesus is our high priest because he made atonement for our sins. Jesus is both king and priest in the order of Melchizedek. Jesus is the author of salvation. And it's time to grow in Jesus Christ. It's time to grow in Jesus Christ. So why is Jesus our high priest? This was the title of this, of this message. Why is Jesus our high priest? Jesus is our high priest because he makes intercession for us so that we can approach God's throne of grace, my friend. God wants us to come to him just as we are. And we have Jesus, we can come to the, the king and the priest that will rule forever. Amen. Well, today, how do you apply this message into your life? Well, number one is to realize that Jesus Christ is your high priest and savior who wants to save you from your sins and wants to start a, you to start a personal relationship with him. Number two is to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you so you can be forgiven and be made right with God. And then three is to accept Jesus as your savior and king of your life. And salvation is a free gift. If you've never heard the gospel, let me share the gospel with you right now and give you an opportunity to respond to the gospel. The gospel is simply that God loves you and has a plan for your life. The Bible says that, you know, God's, for God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life, John 3, 16. God wants to give you eternal life today, but here's the bad news. The bad news is that we are all sinners who need a Savior. That's right. The Bible says that our sin separates us from the life of God, the life, that, the life of God and the life that God has for you and for me, a life of peace a life of joy, a life in the presence of God. But because of sin, we, we live outside of that. We were actually born into a world living outside the presence of God. Would you like to, 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 to live in the presence of God today and forever? This is what eternal life is. And Jesus came to give us eternal life when he went to the cross and he died and he paid the penalty for our sins. That's right, as a high priest, he came and he, he made atonement for our sins on the day of atonement. Yom Kippur, and he went to the cross and died for you and for me. Why? So that we could be forgiven. And how do you be forgiven? Well, it's to confess that Jesus is your Savior and Lord of your life. If you believe in him, if you put your faith in him, you can have this new life that God has for you. 
you see, my friends, Jesus not just died for you on a cross, but it says three days later, he rose again from the grave. He conquered sin and death for you. For, uh, and whoever believes in him will never die or never perish, but have eternal life. Today, would you put your, like to put your faith in him today and have eternal life? Well, you can, and it's to pray a prayer. Would you pray a prayer with me? This is your decision that you can make between you and God. Let's pray right now. Invite Christ into our life. Dear God, thank you for dying on a cross for me. Thank you that you made atonement for all my sins upon a cross. Thank you for being my high priest in the order of Melchizedek, both a priest and king who will reign forever. God, I, I realize that I'm a sinner and I need a savior. Would you come into my life, save me from my sin, and make me new? Today, fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to live for you from this moment on. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, my friends. Well, this is good news. This is your day. And today, God has saved you. He set you free. He's doing a work in your life, and it's so awesome to see. Well, I want to tell you this. Your sins have been forgiven. You now have a new purpose to live for. You get to tell others about Jesus Christ. And guess what? You also have a home in heaven that will last forever. Amen. Well, today, as we go, stick around. We've got some discussion questions for you for Daily Church. But you know, know this, that God loves you so much. He's with you and he wants to go deeper as you grow in your relationship with Christ today. Go make it a great day and God bless. Join us as we take the good news of Jesus Christ to every nation. Now is the time to give to your local church and support your pastor. Every donation you give goes to supporting your church. Your giving helps us reach more people for Christ as we start new daily churches together. Thank you for your support. God bless.